Over the last few months, I've gotten the chance to hang out at Grant Cardone's office for a few days, and then he came to my office for a full day. And a lot of people ask me, how did I even get into this situation? For the first time at his office, he held an invite-only event that lasted a couple of days, and he was super personal in depth with a lot of the people. And we built a good relationship while we were there, but his team ended up hitting me up a month later and said, Grant is coming to Vegas to film his TV show, and we'd love to film it at your office with you. So he came to Vegas with his crew and we filmed for his TV show. And then at the end, we filmed an episode for my podcast. And during those days, I got to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Grant and I learned quite a bit. The first was a quote that he said, I'll never forget. And it was, whatever you resent is an indication of what you should be doing. And it made me really think about that because we're all guilty of hating on different things. Sometimes it's out of jealousy or envy, or maybe we feel like somebody else doesn't deserve that. But a lot of the times it's simply because we know we should be doing what they're doing. For example, I was this way with social media for such a long time. I would hate on all these people who were making content and videos who weren't even doing as much business as me, and the reality was, I knew I should have been making videos as well. This is also true when I would always hate on these online gurus who had education programs. I never wanted to do education because I was just focused on building my own business and being legit. And the reality was, deep down, I knew I should have been doing an education program because not only was it going to help a lot of people, but it'd be good financially for me. And so the reality was what Grant said before. The things you resent are the things you know that you should be doing. And that was the case with me. And that's got me looking at my life and saying, where are some other things that I might be hating on or resenting that I know I should be doing? The second thing I took away from him wasn't even something he said, but it was something that just stood out to me. And it was that I needed to start thinking way bigger. To give an example, the first time we met at his office, it was for an event. And during that time, we got to go walk through the different apartments and see all the people. And he also showed us what his morning sales meeting looks like. They had over a hundred salespeople in the training room going through their daily routine and you just see how big this team really is. They're all getting hyped. They're all talking about how much revenue they closed the day before and they're talking about what's going to happen today and it was just a really cool experience to see. Then I saw it again when he came to my office to film his TV show. And you see the production crew coming in to film the show and how large of a scale they're trying to do it. And you also see that this guy, despite already being a billionaire and having all these things, is still grinding and still working hard even into his 60s. And that's just observing him. When you talk to him, you can't help but feel like you need to step it up and start thinking bigger. And in fact, to take it a step further, he says that you cannot afford to continue playing small. Business is actually much harder to run when you're small versus when you're big. For example, when you're small, if you lose one key person, it could crumble the entire business. But when you're much bigger, you've got so many different people that can cover gaps that the business is gonna continue to move on no matter who comes and goes. And just overall, it's harder to run a small business because you are usually the one doing everything. If you're the one talking to sellers or clients trying to just close every single deal or sale, that takes a lot of time and effort from you. If you've then got to go fulfill on whatever it is you just sold, that also takes a lot of time from you. If you got to deal with all the customer complaints yourself, it's pretty mentally draining. And if you run a small business with very few people, then yeah, you are the one doing all of these things and it is much harder. Things are a lot easier when you're bigger and you've got people in different departments, they're handling the day-to-day -day issues and it allows you to focus on the big picture things that are gonna really drive the business. So I would encourage many of you watching this who are solopreneurs or maybe you only have one or two employees, to really figure out how can I grow this thing because that's what's gonna help me buy back my time, make more money, and have less stress. And I can personally attest to this. I had more stress when I was doing it small than I do today. And let me be honest with you, we have way more problems today than we did when I was smaller. But that's what's gonna happen when you start scaling a business and you're just doing more and more things. You're gonna inevitably run into more and more problems. But when you're not the one always having to solve the problems, it takes a lot off your plate. Third thing I took away from him is that you need to focus on marketing above all else. So going back to a smaller side of business, you might spend the majority of your time just running the day-to-day -day business doing normal tasks. Or you might be taking it a step further and you might be the one trying to close deals. But to succeed at the highest level, you're gonna have to start focusing on marketing. He point blank said that his number one job for his company isn't to do any of the things I just said. 
His number one job is to be the best marketer he can be. If he needs to go raise money for a big apartment they want to buy, then he needs to get out on social media and start talking about it. No one else in the company is going to do that for him. If there's a big event coming up, he needs to be the one hyping the event up, getting people to sign up. He's literally just marketing 24-7. Go look at any of his social media platforms and you're going to see a lot of marketing. And this makes complete sense. If you look at all the top entrepreneurs on social media, they spend a large amount of time marketing on social media by putting out content. All of your favorite people, many of which I'm gonna be talking about in this series, like Cardone, Patrick Bed David, Hormozy, Gary Vee, they're all spending a lot of time creating content, trust me. And if they think it's important, then you should think it's important. And if you're an entrepreneur and you wanna learn more about how to do this, you can go to contentempire.io. I've got a coaching program where we teach entrepreneurs how to create content. The fourth was a funny quote he told me, and that was, if you give me some hate, I'll turn it to great. As you can probably figure out, Grant is a guy who comes up with a lot of quotes. As you grow in business and stature, there's gonna be more haters that come out of the woodwork. Case in point, I know many of you watching this video are not fans of Grant. I'm sure the comments are gonna have a lot of things talking about how he's a scammer and how he's doing this, how he's doing that whatever. But for probably 99% of those people, they've never met Grant in person, they've never talked to him. The majority of what they base their opinion on is videos they've seen from other people. And the crappy thing about society is we live in a clickbait world where negativity gets the clicks more than positivity. Case in point, the podcast we did together, we put a negative title because we know it will get more clicks. And for me, I asked Grant, I said, how do you deal with that? It's a lot to handle psychologically if all these people are talking crap about you all on the internet. And he said, look, Ryan, I embrace the hate. And I'm over here thinking, I don't wanna be hated. I don't want people to dislike me. Who wants that? But the reality is, if you're taking massive action and you're out there and people know who you are, hate is gonna come with the territory you're inevitably going to fail a lot by taking massive action. And the moment you slip up, no matter how much good you've done to that point, people are gonna point fingers and the hate is gonna begin. So instead of trying to hide from it, just know that it is a cost of growing and doing business and becoming known. And to take his second point of that quote, take some hate and turn it to great, he takes whatever hate is coming his way and turns it into marketing. He showed a YouTube video he made where he said he was going bankrupt. And that's because there were all these rumors on the internet talking about how he was gonna go bankrupt and all these things. And so instead of shying away from it, he leaned into it and made a YouTube video that got a ton of views. Now on the rumors of my bankruptcy that is soon to happen, yes, it's true, okay? I'm losing the plane, the condo, all of it's going back to the bank. So if you guys want to get it before it goes back to the bank, call me. And he's constantly embracing the hate and using it to his own advantage and leaning into it. The fifth thing he said was, what are you willing to give up to get to where you wanna go? All big moves require giving up something. You cannot maintain your past life and doing the things you used to do to get to the next level. For example, I started out flipping couches, that was going great, but I had to give it up in order to get into house flipping and devote all of my time there. And house flipping did become really big for me, but eventually I realized that I would have to stop going out on seller appointments and being the guy who was always getting the deals and allow other people to do that so that I could focus on the next level for myself, which was creating social media content. And it's never easy to go through that transition. I had to give up hundreds of thousands of dollars that I could have made during those deals that we probably lost that I would have closed but that's a cost of giving up something in order to reach the next level. So ask yourself, what are you willing to give up today to reach the next level?